Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Saturday live stream. So just like the thumbnail and title suggest, quite a day yesterday. Entertaining times, to say the least. So uh, before we really get into it, let me just say that uh, yesterday's video uh, had some little bit of confusion. So I'm going to address that in today's video. Then we're going to go over some indicators and, of course, what's going to happen next and see what really unfolds. So let's jump in. So, of course, uh, yesterday was pretty bad. It was one of those days where... I think someone, I read this somewhere that <clears throat> for many of the altcoins, uh, 2024 gains were wiped out in 24 hours. And if we can take a look at just in generalizations, uh, market cap overall is down 5%, which you think, eh, that's not too bad. And some weather the storm better than others. I mean, Bitcoin in 24 hours is down like 1.7%. But I want you to pay attention just how much red there actually is, as if you don't know. I mean, I'm sure we're all checking our portfolios, right? Which... Might not be the greatest idea right now. Stay away from those those views. Things change. It's like the weather in Puerto Rico. If you don't like the rain, just stick around for five minutes. It'll change. And that's the same thing with the crypto market. But if we take a look at seven days, just look at how much red. It's it's brutal. Outside the top four, I mean, it's bad. Solana, almost 17% over seven days. Uh, Lido, well, same thing. XRP, ugh. Dogecoin, 13% in 24 hours. Cardano. 15% and 7. Shiba. And look at this. Avalanche, 21%, 26%. Chainlink, 16%. Let's see. Which is the worst ones that just got slaughtered? Actually, we should really look at which ones are actually doing pretty good. Uh, VeChain, up 6% for the week. Congratulations. Let's see if we can find any, any wieners out here. Uh, Neo. Wow. Neo. Really? 25%. Uh, Whitbit, I guess. Uh, Nervos Network, but boy, there's a lot of Jasmine, man, that's a lot of that's a lot of red. I haven't seen this much red in quite some time. But again, in crypto, uh, we just call it a Friday. It's uh, it's pretty sizable, we'd say. But um, this is what we sign up for. And if you've been here any length of time, you know that this is just par for the course, and that's pretty much how it is. Jasmine's doing good, yeah, that's true. So, what does this mean for longs and shorts? Well, a lot of people got liquidated yesterday, almost a billion dollars worth. We had in 24 hours. Uh, the longs were the ones that got slaughtered, which makes sense uh, because people always give into the narrative. The narrative is always, but there's all these institutions coming and it's going to be marvelous and there's mass adoption and it's happening. And I'm like, it's happening. It's true. I mean, I think that in the long run, we're going to do fantastic. Really, we are. It's just that in the short run, you got to be careful. And uh, this is a great lesson yet again, which we seem to go over this all the time. <laughs> and, and like, uh, I know you guys listen, I mean, for the majority, but just people just don't listen. You know, they're like, oh, I want to make a bunch of money now. Okay. So you got 846 million <clears throat> liquidations and then stuff like this happens. I, I saw this and take this with a grain of salt because you never know what is real and what's not real out there, especially in the world of AI and the special of manipulation and just posting pics and things like that. But a lot of people reached out to this guy because it was concerning and it was a uh, crypto nerd. And he said, I uh, just woke up and realized I got liquidated overnight. I was 3X long Pepe coin. Well, that sounds like a good idea. I lost everything I had. I don't even have a thousand dollars in my bank. I've been in crypto since 2017. I lost everything, feel like doing suicide. And of course, over here, you can take a look at his, his profit and loss. Come on in. And then, uh, and then from there, you can see that, I mean, he lost $1,148,487.03. Let's be accurate. And it says negative 100%. But <clears throat> in, in his post later, he said that this was on Binance. And he was only liquidated, I think he said 86%. So he's feeling pretty good. He got like 100,000 back. So that's great. But one of the things that concerned me was, you know, he talks about, uh, I feel like doing suicide. And let me tell you, I, um, on this channel, we post a lot about, it's not a big deal. And if you just follow the rules, it's going to be okay. And there's a lot of, a lot of things that, are way worse to lose than money. You know, your health, uh, your friends and family and loved ones. I mean, to lose that, that's unbearable. Losing a million dollars, I've done that. It sucks. But you know what the great thing is? You can always win that back. So just remember that if you do something stupid like this. And that just happens. So, I mean, these are the things that actually go out. <clears throat> I want everybody to be aware that this is not, this is not a game. You have to follow the rules and you have to be staunch and be a little bit of a stoic. And kind of go from there. So having said all that, we did a video yesterday. And I must have not explained myself because 
for the majority of people, I, I think the majority of people got it, but I had to understand, and this is a, this is an error on my part, I think, that I don't, uh, I don't make it explicitly crystal clear on what I'm talking about sometimes. And I need to like ram it home two or three times because I forget that there's new people out there. So what we did yesterday is we, I said, hey, here's a cell indicator. And it looks like it's converging or it's flashing or, you know, it's, it's getting close. And what I was talking about, well, first of all, I, I, I mentioned, I said, hey, look, if, if you want to know what I'm selling, uh, there's two videos to watch. They're both in the links in the description. One is for like the more established cryptos. That's when I'm selling 80% why and when. And then one are for the newer cryptos, the half and half method. And both of those are under the crypto, crypto, crypto critical videos. There's four of those. And those two are right there. They're in the description of all my videos. And when I talked about it, I was talking about the Pi cycle top. And people said, hey, uh, the Pi is not close at all. It takes months of accelerated parabola to converge the two moving average from now we are now. And then I said, and someone says, I'm glad someone else said it. And then someone said, I'm confused by my look at this Pi cycle top isn't even close to flashing. And then some people got it. They're like, yeah. You know, when I was talking about those narratives, narratives and things were getting closer. And what I was saying essentially was like, hey, look, I mean, as these things get closer, you got to start thinking about selling. I'm not saying I'm selling today or whatever else, you know, but I think people, again, maybe it was my fault. I didn't explain it well enough, but some people were very, very actually very happy. They were thanking me in Twitter because they said, hey, you know, thanks for putting out that video because I sold to them yesterday, which was not, it wasn't my intent. And it just, of course, everything crashed. So let me just be ex explicitly clear. What I was talking about yesterday was the Pi cycle top. And I'll, maybe make, let me make this also crystal clear. The Pi cycle top was created in 2019. It was not created in 2010. Like, and, it's not, and it wasn't created in 2022. It was created in 2019. And retrospectively looking back, when the 111 day moving average crosses over 300 day moving average times two, you tend to look at the tops and it, and looking backwards, it did that. It crossed over on December 17, 2017. There was a double top in 2013 and it hit the tops. And then over on 2021, it didn't do it at that, at April. Well, maybe it did. Let me just, hold on. It crossed over. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, the 11th of April when the Bitcoin price was 60,000. So what I was saying was this, I reset the zoom, was that I'm saying that, hey, you know, this is one of my indicators and it's getting closer and they're coming together. So at some point when these start to cross over, that is a huge flag for me to carry out my plan, which is to sell 80% of my crypto. And uh, that was it. And then I got a lot of people saying, hey, this is Rob selling everything and Maybe I should sell everything. I'm like, man, I, anyhow. So here we are. And I'm trying to tell you that no, it did not cross. Let me say that again. It did not cross over. But when it does, that is a big signal to sell. And that was it. But there's other things I take a look at, right? So if we take a look at the Pi Cycle Top, great. There's a great website you can look it into. Uh, of course, you can use Ben's website. But looking at Bitcoin has a lot of great high quality stuff. And I look in the NUPL. And now we want to we want to really take a look at that because, you know, hey, did we miss it? Did, it, did everything, was that the top yesterday? Well, obviously not, right? NUPL, what is this? It's the market value and the realized value. Damn it, nothing there. The realized value takes the price of each Bitcoin when it was last moved. And... The market value is Bitcoin multiplied by the numbers of coin circulation, obviously, right? So we can see here that, again, it's a good time to buy in the green zone. Really good time to buy or to sell in the red zone. And we're not there yet. Okay. We're right in the middle. Things are just trucking along, just like the pie saga top. It's moving into that area, but it's not there. And then we always talk about uh, Bitcoin time spent in risk bands. Right now, currently, we're in the 0 0.6 to 0.7, which is down here. Again, things are heating up. And I talked about in the video, when it starts to get the 0 0.85 area, I start to think about selling. And again, it's not using just one indicator and going, ah, fear and great index is at 92. I got to sell everything. No, you look at everything. And then, of course, you take the narrative and you make the best decision for yourself. And again, this is just what I'm doing. You don't have to do this. 
And then, of course, we take a look at the MVRVZ score, which uh, realized value. Hold on, let me see here. Yeah, I need PL. The market value versus the realized value. And again, green area, good time to, to sell. Red area, good time to buy. And right now, we're not even close. And then also, we take a look at the pull multiple. This is a good one. I like this one. Because we're always talking about, we're getting into the halving right now. The pull multiple is divided by the daily issuance value of Bitcoins by the 360 value of day moving average. So as the miners start to sell, you, know, you sort of say, hey, I think it's getting a little bit overheated. And are we there? No, we're essentially, we're still right in the middle, right? We're not even in the red zone yet. So it's looking pretty good. And then, uh, of course, the one that people love to look at, which I found this fascinating today, that the fear on grade index, you know, as much as we just took a big dump yesterday, as of April 13th, well, that's not correct. Because the Bitcoin price is Bitcoin price $70,000. I don't think it is. 67,000. Hmm. Now, da, 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 da. I don't think it's, uh, says the score is 72. Correct me in the comment section, but it should be lower than that. I found this very odd that people were this greedy after we dumped. I'm like, no, that's true. But it is, that's the date. That's not the right, that's not the right price. So we take a look at all those things and we add them together. And right now is, for me, wouldn't be the time to dump 80% of my crypto. I'm just being honest with you. So from yesterday's video, obviously didn't cross. Hope you understand that. I mean, for the, the majority of you do. I just want to make that crystal clear. But then I, you know, I heard rumblings like Rob, and, and the narrative is always there. The narrative is, but mass adoption, massive institutions, more countries are using it. We've got Michael Saylor, Michael Strategy, and the business is actually using that as, you know, founding. And I'm like, uh, you, you know, in, in all honesty, you're right. I mean, we are moving in the right direction, but let's take a look at some, some data pieces. So this is the Bitcoin active addresses. What is being moved around as far as with the different Bitcoin addresses that are out there? What are actually active or just dormant? Which, of course, if you're a hodler, you're not really doing too much. Like, I haven't moved my Bitcoin from my ledger in I don't know how long. All the things that I do is I just move uh, my Bitcoin from Coinbase uh, into my, actually now I put it in my tangent, my ledger, I haven't even touched in a while, but that's me. But you can see right here, we're just kind of chopping sideways. So this isn't really telling us much, right? But I found it interesting as well. We take a look at the Bitcoin addresses holding X amount of Bitcoin by year, right? And we can break this down into uh, less than point, point zero 0.01, or excuse me, greater than point zero 0.01, greater than point 0.1, and greater than 1. And we're going to see that there hasn't been that much difference from 2023 to 2024. It's the same, 13 million. And actually, greater than 0.1 in 2023, we're actually, now we're reduced. So that's interesting. And now greater than one, we're still at a 1 million. So we're like, okay, these are addresses holding more than one Bitcoin, we still have 1 million. Well, let's just, let's just scale that up. Let's take a look at who owns more than 10 Bitcoin. You would think like, okay, there's always whales accumulating, you know, and maybe more people become whales because they own it. Not really. I mean, it's just chopping sideways. And actually, if we zoom in on this one, we can see that it's actually we've had a, a slight reduction in balances of more than 10. Now, of course, you can make the argument, well, that's because these whales, they, they chop up their wallets and they put them into two, three, 10, 100. Yeah, maybe. Most of the people that I know, uh, even if they are whales, are lazy. I don't think they do it that much. And uh, I think usually what's going on is they're having other people custody it for themselves. And those custody services, they're not chopping it up into massive amount of wallets. Just saying. More problems to do. And how about 100 Bitcoin? So Bitcoin address is greater than 100 Bitcoin. Let's take a look at that. It's still sideways. So we're talking about mass adoption and things like that. I mean, I think we're in the right direction, but if we just take a look at the balances and the, and the sentiment and the active addresses, it's pretty much sideways. So we're looking at that. And now what about 10,000 Bitcoin? This is my favorite one. 10,000 Bitcoin. Look at this. Look at this. 10,000 Bitcoin. Well, I think we hit a peak. Huh, look at that. We hit a, we hit a peak in 2018. Who'd have thunk it? Maybe, yeah, look at that. So we had a peak in 2018, but of course, as time goes on, the most decentralized asset out there is Bitcoin. 
So it would be disseminated across multiple institutions, multiple countries, as they seize that from other individuals, other minnows getting it. So, you know, those 10,000 Bitcoin wallets are few and far between. Even though we had a quite a bit of a drop off, I will say it is interesting when people talk. Let me reset that. I want to make this crystal clear. It is interesting when we have. Ah, this is actually interesting. It is interesting when we have a rally into something huge, like the last bull cycle. Look at this. November 18th, 2020. I believe the last halving was May 12th, 2020. And then of course, we chopped sideways for a little bit, went up. Everything was looking good. But you can see that these addresses with great, more than 10,000 Bitcoin, what did they do? They either move their Bitcoin and chop them up into different wallets, perhaps. Or maybe they moved those and actually sold them. Could be. Because they're like, hey, things are a little bit too heated. I'm going to take some profits. And then right around November, a little more of accumulation. And then actually, no, excuse me, February 15, 2022, what did they start doing? Buying back up again. I got to tell you, there is a case for smart money. Now where we're at, we're just kind of chopping sideways. So if we take a look at these things, we can see that, yes, you know, adoptions here and everything else, things are going great. But if we take a look at the data, really, it's a lot of sideways chop. But there are the whales that are accumulating right now. And I want to point this out because people are going to talk about this and they're going to say, but this whale and that whale. But remember that just because there's certain whales out there, 5, 10, 20, 30, 50 different whales out there, they can't absorb everything. They just can't. I mean, they are trying to as much as they possibly can. But just remember that Bitcoin whales in accumulation phase does not mean that they're going to absorb everything, lock it all up so the price goes to the moon. It's just that you've got some help in price appreciation. And this actually comes from uh, Ki Young Ju. And he is the founder of CryptoQuant. Had him on the uh, channel a couple of times. Real nice guy, real smart. And he just talks about on his platform, he gets a lot of uh, whale accumulation alerts. When 20,000 Bitcoin flow into these certain addresses. And this is what's, what's actually happening. And he says, yeah. He goes, right now, whales are accumulating. And that's great. But again, how much can they actually do? But I did find this part very interesting, which was because people are, are worried right now about the price action, obviously, right? We want it, want the price to go up. Will it keep going down? I don't think it's going to go down to the 50,000, 40,000, 30,000 that some people are calling. And it's all because of this, miners. Every time that we've seen this kind of price action, everything is run through the miners. If miners aren't profitable, nothing works. I mean, they can do certain things, but this is what they have to do. And the price has to be above 80,000 to keep mining profitable. Now, there's been other people that have put out uh, varying opinions on the actual price action of this, but this is one of the, we'll just go with this number, but variables are out there. Again, King and Jew talks about it. And it says here, after the May 2020 halving, the price for miners to continue mining profitably rose above 30,000. That was May 2020, the last halving. So 30,000, not too bad to meet, but at that point, it wasn't there. The price of Bitcoin also pumped to an all-time high of 69,000. You know, that makes me question something. May of 2020, what do you think the price was? Because if it was, if it had to be that profitable for them to make it, let's do this. Yeah. About ten thousand dollars, May twelfth, wasn't even ten. It was nine thousand dollars. So miners were running at a deficit after the happening because they had to have it at thirty thousand. So imagine that. But what do they do? I mean, they're like, well, we believe in it. We want things to actually work out. And what happened? And I'm not going to say there's manipulation or anything going on, but I'm just saying that for them to be profitable now, it has to hit eighty thousand. What do you think is going to happen? The average Bitcoin mining cost as of April 6th is roughly $50,000. And after the halving on April 20th, average mining costs will rise above 80,000. 80, and for miners to continue operating profitably, the Bitcoin price must trade higher than the price. And that's very true. So I still think we could see some price appreciation. But as far as like in the near term, between us, 
I don't know if, if you guys feel like you've accumulated plenty. You're like, you know what? I've got way too much Bitcoin in my wallets. I've got way too much Ethereum and Cardano and Solana and altcoins here. I just can't get any more. I just can't. So I'd like the prices to remain uh, elevated and so I can sleep easy. Or maybe you're like me, like, you know what? Maybe it does go down. And uh, that might be good for some kind of dollar cost averaging, but it's up to you. Me personally, just remember that every time you think the market's going to do something, it does the exact opposite of what you want it to do. And that's why we have these rules. These rules are here for a reason. Number one rule, don't invest more than you can afford to lose. It's all gone. Number two, everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Number three, don't leave anything on exchanges. We know why. Number four, don't use leverage. We saw a great example in the very beginning. And the last rule, which is the most important rule that even I screw this up, is take profits along the way. Nobody ever went broke taking profits. And, uh, you know, I actually said a couple of weeks ago, don't forget to take profits or I'll dump on you. And everybody laughed. Well, here we are. Anyhow, so there's that piece. Let me know what you think about that in the, in the comment section. But there is one more thing I wanted to, to bring up, <clears throat> which was when we talk about the mining profitability, I remember there was one of the, uh, the head of Bitcoin mining operations, and he talked about how, you know, even, I mean, they make their money essentially through, through mining Bitcoin. But one of their biggest fees and revenue generators are ordinals and how that's actually working out. So I think that even though this time really is different because we didn't have ordinals before, which are essentially NFTs for Bitcoin. But there's a new piece to this puzzle, and it's called runes. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. This is very new. And there's a great article put out. Very quick, I'm going to go over this real quick because I, want, I think this could actually be a catalyst for the Bitcoin miners don't have to be this or uh, to have the price to go to this range, even though it'd be good. And it'd be something actually to, to take a look at. And this is why I think that Bitcoin dominance could go even higher. Runes on Bitcoin. What the heck is this? So very easy. What's runes? Runes is a standard token for issuing fungible tokens on Bitcoin. So fungible one for one. One dollar, you can trade it for another dollar. Same thing, right? And then non-fungible are like NFTs. Non-fungible tokens, not the same. So fungible, same. Non-fungible, not the same. Runes are set to launch in April 2024, coinciding with the upcoming Bitcoin halving. Interesting. Why was it created? It, Runes is a, is a simple protocol, minimal on-chain footprint, and responsible UTXO management. First of all, what the heck is UTXO management? I, I just want to explain this because I've, I've, I've heard this before and I've learned it, but it always escapes me. So I want to go over this, make sure everybody knows. So a, a good example is this. If you got 10 bucks in your pocket, someone goes, hey, pay me five bucks. You can't rip 10 bucks in half and go five dollars. It doesn't work like that. It's the same thing with, with Bitcoin, right? So here's the example. This is a great one from River. So let's say <clears throat> Alex, which is the one on the left here, wants to send Julia 5.10 Bitcoin. So how does that work? Well, you got five Bitcoin and 0 0.2 Bitcoin. So you just can't rip it in half. What you got to do is you got to take the five and the 0 0.2, and that's the input. So now you got 5.2 Bitcoin. And you transfer it over here, which is the second step. The wallet creates a new UTXO for Julia in the amount of 5.10. But then you got to put it back and you have a change left over, which is point, essentially it's just change, right? 0 0.09. So every time you get change, you get no or, or more unspent transactions, UTXOs, your unspent transaction outputs. So every time you get change, essentially you're just building this up and building this up and building this up. That's why and sometimes in your wallet, when you send Bitcoin, you're like, what the heck? Why is it so expensive? It's because the more UTXO or the more change that you have in your wallet, the higher the fee is going to be. So there's a trick to do it, which I haven't tried this myself, but you can send the Bitcoin back to your wallet. This is what they recommend at River. And of course you can get rid of those, uh, those UTXOs and uh, go from there. So, but the problem is when you have these UTXO, it builds everything up and it's kind of a burden on the Bitcoin blockchain. Does that make sense? I hope it made sense. Cause that's essentially what it is. I try to make it as simple as possible. So runes is different from the, from the BRC20, which is the ordinals, which is complex, not UTXO based. Latter characteristic causes BRC20 token center to produce excessive junk UTXOs, which bogs down the Bitcoin blockchain, right? Or congestion. 
Goal of runes is to replace the less efficient ordinals. Awesome. How does it work? Integrates naturally with Bitcoin, which uses UTXOs, helps minimize the creation of junk UTXOs. Makes sense. Token supply of rune is contained in a single UTXO. Awesome. Supply transfer is 120 a bit unsigned integer, so the maximum is whatever the heck this number is. Each rune has divisibility, which is the number of decimals have, maximum is 38. So it makes it very simple. Tries not to make so many UTXOs. It doesn't bog down the system. That's it. So what does it do? What does this do? Ruins protocol will allow products to issue different types of fungible tokens, such as security tokens, stable coins, governance tokens, whatever you want on the Bitcoin blockchain. You couldn't do that before. I mean, you could with L2s and stuff like that. But, but with this one, <coughs> they're trying to make Bitcoin more usable because let's be honest. I mean, it does a great job of what it does as far as like a store of value and maybe a hedge against inflation. I just, think, I, I just say it's a four-year store of value. But if you want to build something more on top of it, which is what all the Bitcoin maximalists have been complaining about, this is awesome. You can expand Bitcoin's utility, attract more users who will enjoy near instant and low cost transactions with the protocol's potential lightning compatibility. In other words, runes could help Bitcoin achieve its goal of widespread adoption. Maybe we get to actually buy that cup of coffee with Bitcoin. And the last thing, more transaction fees will be generated as more people interact with runes tokens. So instead of one, billionaire moving a ton of Bitcoin across the globe and he pays 25 bucks and no one else wants to use it because it's just store value, right? Now we could actually build something on top of that and actually pay for things. And that means that the more people we actually have doing that, hundreds of millions, maybe billion plus people, that's more revenue for the miners. Incentivize them to keep securing the Bitcoin network. That's why I think Bitcoin's a big, huge play. And it's not just the Bitcoin itself. Stuff like this is going to revolutionize everything. So I like this. I'll let you know when everything works out <coughs> or when there's new, new information on this. I know we're supposed to have uh, the team from Magic Eden come in as they talk about rune stones and things like that. But again, this is a new, a new platform. So I'll try to keep myself updated and everybody else. But I think this is what I think Bitcoin could make it to be what it's supposed to do. Transactions, peer-to-peer -peer transaction, which one is, was in the white paper. Anyhow, so that's it. And then uh, lastly, and we're kind of going kind of long in this one. Sorry about this. But uh, <coughs> excuse me. We talked a lot about Bitcoin and all that stuff. I just want to say that I, I think as we move forward into uh, 2020, later 2024 and 2025, I think the big narratives, I mean, we know what they are, right? D-Pin, AI, Web3, stuff like that, L2s for Bitcoin. But I think it's actually products that actually work and actually do something. And uh, I'm going to give everybody, I'm going to give the Solana and the Cardano people a big, a big shout out because I know they hate each other for some reason. So first of all, I like products that actually have a working product. Helium, <coughs> excuse me, is of course built on Solana. Didn't, when didn't used to be, now it is. And you can use this for, you know, your phone service, 20 bucks a month. I think it's unlimited talks, talk and data and texting. 20 bucks a month is pretty good. <coughs> Damn it, excuse me. So I like this for people who actually have service and coverage, and that would be on Solana, and actually does something, right? I'm very, very bullish on that. And I'm also bullish on World Mobile Token. And this was uh, from the Web3 Cat. And it was uh, uh, Jessica and Nick from uh, the Coin Bureau team. And they did an interview with uh, Mickey Watkins from World Mobile. And, you know, me and Jess, Jess is, I was introduced to Mickey back in 2019. I think I did my first interview with Mickey in 2020. We're an Earth Node operator. So full disclosure. And they're actually, they have it in uh, Tanzania and Zanzibar. And they actually just rolled things out in the U.S. in uh, Reno. Uh, for coverage of people who don't have, you know, localized coverage like what a helium could provide. This would be something more of like in the rural areas or places that don't have that last mile for telecommunications, which is what World Mobile does. So I like to see these things actually happen. I think the next evolution for crypto digital assets is something that actually does something like D-PIN, but actually has real world use case. And that's it for today. So look, that went a little long. Sorry about that. But that's it uh, for this piece. Now you want to stick around, we'll do a little Q&A, answer all your questions to the best of my abilities, and we'll go from there. But if you got to take off, go enjoy the weekend. It's a beautiful day here in Puerto Rico. But uh, that's it for this piece. All right, let's see what we got.
<coughs> Will says, Helium Mobile has coverage everywhere. Perhaps. <coughs> but, uh, you know, you need that the Helium Miner, which, you know, you have to actually have that within a certain range. And people have to actually buy that setup and then to have that mass coverage. So it's not like it's everywhere. Uh, I think there's a lot of areas. And I think uh, World Mobile has a lot of areas. So everything that's kind of, you know, overlocked. I think more people that actually are in, you know, cities and are around and, and not so much rural would be a pretty good one. And then it's all comes down to price too. So, yeah. And again, I mean, how does how does T-Mobile and Verizon and all the different uh, phone carriers start to compete? It's not just about coverage. Then it becomes about price and functionality and the different options that they actually have. So I think let them start battling out over that. See which one's the winner. Yeah. <laughs> Summarize the whole live, please. Sell everything. All right. So let's see. Some things need to be said. That's right. Decentralized VPN. I remember that. I remember uh, Coinbase was ruling some of that out a couple of years ago. I don't know how it worked out. Aristotle says, it's amazing. I see very few comments of Iron having their internet turned off. People are not wondering why crypto is messed up. You look at the global picture. Yeah, it looks like there could be a war. I think, uh, correct me in the comment section, not a very political channel, but uh, I believe uh, Israel uh, inadvertently or inadvertently uh, bombed the uh, uh, Iran consulate. And it looks like war could break out between the two. And President Joe Biden came out and said, don't do it. And now we're in the middle of that. So that's fantastic. So see how that works out. Awesome. <laughs> Imagine an escort with no Bitcoin. What's it cool as right now? Uh, you know, some people don't really get into Bitcoin. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Bitcoin not dropping on alts. Yeah. Everything is dropping. Well, that's a shame. Let's see how much it is dropping. Uh, let me tell you, it's not that bad. This is what I got. It's like the same price. You know, I've been this this sector so long. It's just uh, this is the great thing. Like if if you're in, if you're from 2021, 2022, you know, uh, or even right now, you're probably like, this sucks. This is awful. Trust me, it gets better every time. They just got to sit around and just wait. That's all it really is. Waiting, patience, and being stubborn as hell. So uh, about the same stuff. I'm not too overly concerned. I don't see like uh, Bitcoin to 30K yet. So I think I'd be concerned if it goes to like 15K. Yeah. But then the real question becomes, and everybody says the same thing, which is, well, I'm just waiting for this dip to buy in. And then when it dips to like, maybe it'll dip some more. I'll wait. And it dips some more. I'm like, well, maybe it'll dip even even harder. It's the same thing with uh, with the bull run. People are like, well, I was going to sell, but I mean, but it did a 2x. It could do a 20x. And it does, and it does a 10x. And they're like, well, it can do a 100x then. And they never sell. It's just, <laughs> just how it is. Uh, let's see. What's up, guys, if you're selling? Some people sold yesterday. They're very happy. Um, but the trick is, you know, is, is to, uh, I, mean, all of, I really, it depends on you. You know, what's your goals and what do you want to do? What are you doing with that money? If you're like, well, I had to, I, mean, I was waiting for the time to sell because I needed that kidney. Well, congratulations. Time to get your reactive CRP down. Let's see. The rise people says, Iron didn't attack Israel's rockets. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it was the other way around. Israel bombed the consulate. Mm. Slack says, Rob, do you think with the strength of Bitcoin, the cycle, ETH and alts will not break Bitcoin's dominance this time? Depends. I mean, what I took a look at, you know, with runes and with the L2s, like take a look at core. Core is something that we're going to do a deep dive on. I'll show you. 
Let me show you. So Core is an EVM compatible layer two solution for Bitcoin. And right now it dropped at the planet, 25%. Now it was ranked as high, I think it's 49, now it's number 74. So take it as you will. But like I said, what's great about this is they're building on top of Bitcoin, the most secure decentralized network on the entire planet. EVM compatible smart contracts on a Bitcoin power blockchain. I think they're looking to add DEXs into Bitcoin. Imagine, imagine trading, imagine the meme coin craze that has taken over Ethereum and Solana and BNB chain and Avalanche coming to Bitcoin. You kidding me? It'd go on insane. And of course, imagine that being done at a fractions of a penny because you're on a layer two solution. Now tell me Bitcoin's dominance won't go up. Pretty good. Thankfully for me, Bitcoin's always been the heaviest part of my portfolio, like we know. For you, it might not be, and that's okay. Because it's not like, oh, well now Bitcoin dominance is gonna go up, my altcoins are gonna go down. No. Remember, in, in these bull runs, when they go parabolic, everything does fine. Just depends on which one's gonna do the best. I don't know. But I do think dominance could go up. Hey, Rob, you think there's more downside? Sure, why not? But remember, uh, Hong Kong is set to approve. And remember, Hong Kong is not China per se. It's uh, two systems, one country, right? So Hong Kong is not mainland China, but it's kind of like the proving ground to see what they're actually going to do. But different companies that are in mainland China looks like they can get into this Bitcoin ETF that's going to be approved by April 15th. <laughs> and we'll see what it does. So as far as downside, when that hits, not too worried. I mean, that'll be pretty positive. The big question is uh, what's going to happen globally with, and Aristotle and Plato said it very wisely, which was war. Uh, initially, in wars, uh, markets usually crash, and then people get a footing, and then it actually accelerates. Take a look at what happened with Ukraine. The day that Putin stepped in with Ukraine, what happened to markets? They don't like that. Volatile goes, it just gets incredibly volatile. Everybody starts selling because they panic. And then the, and the smart money, which really I don't think is that smart, goes, you know what? I think we know what's going to happen here. And they start to buy up everything. And then, of course, the market just turns around. And you can go back and just take a look historically. You can take a look at the Korean War, Vietnam War, even back to World War II. Same thing happens. And war is just an awful solution anyhow. War is stupid. Uh, how do you like Mexico? Best place of all time. It is. <laughs> if you guys have not seen this kid, Jesus Martinez, this guy, Jesus Martinez, he did a fantastic replay or a review of the solana base games oh it was good star atlas i didn't know it was that sweet and he is the first solana gaming ambassador highly recommend you check out his his uh his show it's great and uh it'll it, it remember the narratives we talked about deep in ai layer twos for bitcoin and web threes web three gaming and uh, no way knows it better than jesus well you know Kagi's pretty good too, and Stash, and Johnny Hustle. But Jesus seems to just love doing it. So watch his show. And as far as like, I'm broke. I know, first of all, I think Jesus has a higher net value just because of his nodes that he's gotten into in the last uh, six months. He's doing just fine. Don't feel sorry for that guy. Ah. When we love one another, it's true. Blue Flowflish, happy for this pullback, more hovering time. I have to agree. Discount day, tiny more shares. Mr. Wright, probably gonna pay off pretty well for Mr. Wright. Pay the Panda Pies here. Meme is here, wow, meme. <laughs> Thank God for voice of reason. Ben Cowan. Woke me up to a Bitcoin heavy portfolio. Not a maxi, but I'm doing fine. Let me tell you, I don't know if you guys, if you want to see somebody who is breathing a, 
a sigh of relief. Ben has taken a ton of a ton of guff because of of his position on uh, Bitcoin dominance for the longest time, and now he's like, "Hey, it's at fifty six percent." And when you know people were calling me out when the alts are doing pretty well, and it's true, and it's hard to keep that conviction. It really is. So like, Ben's got that conviction. You know who else? Like James over Invest Answers, he has high high conviction of Solana, and I give it to him. You know, Solana had really turned around for nine dollars. Now we're at it went at, it went at two hundred bucks, but it's down twenty five percent from that point. I think it's at one fifty now. And a lot of people, like like the good ones, they don't just jump around like this is great, this is great, this is great, this sucks, this sucks. This sucks. They're just like this is good, this is good, this is good. And this is what I'm going to do. And they have a plan. And they just kind of they're just unshakable. That's an that's a good word to say. Uh, Meme says Rob, will you walk the dogs again tomorrow? I finally thing up doing after virtually catching your, oh yeah, it's going around here on the island. Yeah, so tomorrow, every Sunday, if you're in the Puerto Rico area, we go to Amigos de los Animales and we walk all the shelter dogs and we get to go out, <clears throat> we go by the beach, they get to uh, run around the sand and the water, it's great, we get them out of the kennels and then we come back. It's just uh, something that we do. So yeah, I'll be there at eight. Uh, I'll post it on uh, X if you follow me on Twitter, uh, how you get there and all that stuff. And then afterwards I buy everybody breakfast. Hey, Nas is here. I was really thinking I'm sell before everything dumped, but didn't pull the trigger and everything crashed. Then you know what that means, Nas? That means that, well, you didn't sell, so you got two options. Just sit around and don't really care about it. Wait till the big bull run, or maybe look to some of those products that you're like, you know what, I like that one. I'm going to buy that one. Because it's now it's on sale. Some are like 40% on sale. Rob, are you a Link Marine? Uh, I own Link. I don't Trust me. Most everybody in, in this comment section, if you name a token, I probably own it because I've got a lot of stuff that I need to unload on people. Let's be honest. I hear you. That's on Solana. Doing great. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I mean, I can't say it's doing great. Let's be honest. The congestion is out of control, right? We talked about this yesterday. And um, <laughs> they have a plan to fix it which is essentially take the cartridge out and blow on it and put it back. I'm just kidding. Uh, Solana is, a, is, I always like to talk about Solana and Cardano together. I know I, people think that like this is crazy, but I think if they, and even Charles Hoskins said, Charles Hoskins said a long time ago talked about that, you know, they were in discussions with Solana at some point and somebody finds the article, that's great. But he's like, yeah, we're talking to Salon and see how we can work together. That, that obviously didn't materialize, but I always thought it'd be great to use the part of Solana that is essentially fast and super duper cheap and marry that with, you know, a little bit, a little bit slower, but super decentralized, well, decentralized and uh, super secure. And kind of like that's why I gave those two examples, like World Mobile Token, essentially on Cardano, but it's now multi-chain. And also helium, which is built on Solana. And that was just an, a, a talk about telecommunications. So thoughts on Solana? Well, hopefully they can. I mean, it looks like they're going to fix this congestion issue with all of their validators. So that's great. Do you think Solana will recover? No, probably. Probably. I got to go watch that movie. <laughs> what, what's it good for? Not crypto. It's very true. Ah, uh, oh, Joby says condition is gone. Updates around the corner. Fire dancer in the next six months. Fire dancer is supposed to supercharge everything. Let's see if it works out. Joby. Ah, Duke Juan. Are you getting involved with the uh, V chain airdrop? Not. I should get, I still have some V chain. I should probably dig that up. We'll see. Dominance to 60. Can I quit my job and play Flappy Bird? You can. We'll see when that actually gets released. <laughs> That's a good one. Let's see. What did I miss here? Oh, let me go to the bottom. Ah, looks like... Salon is on the mend. Dogs Thrive is here. Cat with a K is here. 
crypto meme says Cardano needs users right now. It has none. Nah, it's not true. It has it has some users. I mean, I'm there using little <clears throat> little things here and there. Um, matter of fact, we're going to have on Josh and Rob from Cornucopias next week, and they're multi-chain as well, and they uh, started on Cardano. So we're going to talk to them, see what's going on with their game. That should be good. If you haven't seen that game. Like I'm not a big gamer, but like I can I can see what would appear to be fun with pretty good graphics and a reasonable reasonable outcome. Chrono Copies looks good, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, hmm, Theo's got a this is interesting. Think of Bitcoin as the new base money transfer protocol. Just getting started for worldwide adoption. Sats like packets can take different route to the same place if necessary. We'll see. I just do think like we're gonna need something like runes or an L2 to really make it really make it run. And there's a lot of good projects out there. Sammy, Sammy says, What are you setting your limit orders at? I'm not. So for like limit orders and things like that, I gotta have things on the exchanges. I know some people will do like, and you can do whatever you want to. Like I say, don't leave things on exchanges. And some people are like, well, I got to leave some. Okay. I'm not your dad. You know, you do whatever you want. But uh, I just don't want to do it. I don't want to deal with it. And um, I just don't want to have another Voyager Celsius BlockFi FTX incident. So I take it all off and store it on these, on these uh, cold storage devices. If I miss an opportunity where like, one night it goes from 70,000 to 80,000. And I didn't like, maybe I wanted to sell at 80,000. I missed it. I'm okay because I'm all right. Now, some people say, well, I'm gonna put a little bit on there. Go ahead, sounds good. As long as you don't lose everything like some people have. My SWE and Arbitrum is down bad. Everybody, yeah, just like everything else. <laughs> I'm scared. Frankfurt, don't be scared. It's just another day in crypto. It's not, when you're here longer, you know, I don't know how long you've been here, Frankfurt, but and even, if, even if you are serious or not, but it doesn't really matter. In the grand scheme of things, you just go, well, it's down today. So I have two options. I can, I have three options. I can worry about it or I can do nothing uh, or I can start maybe buying some more positions because then when it goes up, because Nothing stagnant forever. Works out. Pepe coin. Hello. I think that's, I think we're good. Yeah. 30%. It's all right. A look, and uh, I don't want to show you this, but let me see. Oh, I pull up. We all know, and I think for some people who are new, to take a look at the normalcy of pullbacks and just how they are, if I can find, yeah, hold on. Images. Uh, ah, here we go. Nice. Not that one. Ooh, Ooh this is a good one. I think it was in a straight line. That's what I'm trying to say. Look at this. So just like today, and people are gonna they're gonna trot this stuff out to you all day long about ah don't worry this and that, but it's it is true, you know. I mean, <clears throat> we like the big games, the big gains, and they're, and they're not even including 2017. This is just recently. 2017 it was even more volatile, but you saw like November 2020 to right before the end of the year, 158 percent, then it dropped 30 percent. And it went up 100 percent, down 26 percent. How much have we, how much have we appreciated since the ETFs in January? Pretty well amount. I think we were sitting around 39, 40 thousand. Then we went, we went all the way to 73 thousand. That's pretty good price appreciation. And now we've had these pullbacks. People are like, oh, I'm scared. Shouldn't be. Not a big deal. But look at this. 
I mean, just these, this is, this is a traditional finance investor's nightmare. And this for us is a September. <laughs> ah, man, never gets old. But yeah, just to be aware, that's how it's going to be. Nah, Mike says, if this drop bothers you, you out of crypto. No, if this drop bothers you, let it, let it soak in. Realize that that's how it's going to be. You know, you feel a little worried. You're like, wow, I'm a little bit worried. But then you just, you know, do a little research and just see like, okay, what has happened in the past? Did it come back? Did it go to zero? How long do I got to wait? And we just take a look at a chart. You don't really have to wait, you know, like 10, 20 years. It's uh, it's just a normal, normal thing. And that's about it. Ah, Crypto Chat says, Rob, what's a good meme to get in now? I've got a great meme for you. First of all, they're all gambling. And some people will say, some people, and, and they are actually right. They'll say, uh, why do we talk about these projects that do nothing for the crypto space? It's a, it's actually a pretty reasonable comment and discussion to really go over, which is this. Um, there's no reason to really go and gamble in Las Vegas, right? If you think about it, what's the what's the point of going there, right? You go there, the house usually always wins, and uh, you know you make bad decisions, and maybe you drink too much, and maybe you get and maybe you lose too much, and that's pretty much how it is. But why do we do it? Well, we do it because it's fun. It's great. I lived in Vegas for two years. Fantastic place. But, uh, you know, meme coins are the same thing. Why do we even give it a breath? It's because it's, it's gambling. And as long as we all know it's gambling, then it's okay. But the day that we start to realize that, okay, well, these meme coins are actually, they have value and there's going to have real utility, I'm, I, I can't get with you on board that one. So anyhow, to talk about the next... Next meme coin on our channel, Dan Degen, where I talk about the most degenerate stuff that's out there, where either you're going to lose all your money, there's a 99% chance you lose all your money. There's a 1% chance you can make gains. Actually, it might even be worse than that. But there's a new one called Katamoto. And actually, <clears throat> if you want to take a look at uh, some of our our buys from Dan Degen. There's a link in the description. It's called 5% Degen Place. And if you scroll down, you'll see a spreadsheet. And it looks like this. And it goes over all the different things that we've invested into. The date that we reviewed it, the date that we purchased it, the amount of tokens that we got, the amount that we put in, the X, you know, how much it actually gained or lost which it all, they all did pretty good, I'll be honest with you. Genso Kish did great, half a million. That was a good one. About $5,000 investment. Woo, Genso Kish. But then it goes over and says, yeah, but what is it worth now? And over is like price today. So you can take a look at that. But uh, yeah, that one that we were talking about, Katamoto, Dan Dijin. It's gambling. Man, so is there, it's only gambling because greedy people don't sell. And that's exactly, you know what? It's a great point. It's exactly why I made this, this uh, sell video right here. Like this one is what, what, when I talk about like the majority of the, the established cryptos, the Bitcoins, the Ethereums, the Solana, the Cardanos, this is what I look for. We, we went over that right now. But this second video I just put out like a week ago, where I talk about stress-free profits, the half and half method. And this is what you would use for the degenerate gambling meme coin types of things. It's very simple. And it, I mean, you're not going to, uh, you know, you're not going to white knuckle it and tell it, you know, 1000 X, you're not going to do that. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but what I do is I just, you know, I sell half, let the other half ride. And then when it doubles, I take another half, let the other half ride. And I keep doing halves and halves and halves and halves until I can't do it anymore. And then I'm like, well, that was fun. And it goes to zero. That's it. 
worked out pretty well. Worked out pretty well for when token. Worked out really well for hot dog, Costco hot dog. The other one I did. Milo. <laughs> They're all the same. So, yeah. Mm. Ah, Mohammed. Hey, Rob, remember you sent me about assets transfer from a trust wallet because it got hacked. I remember this. Never suggested it to uh, go to Zach XBT. I sent a text and Twitter reply. No, which instead of sending a, if you send him a DM, probably doesn't work too well. But if you send a, like a post in, in X, maybe tag me in there. Maybe I can retweet it. And maybe he'll see it. But again, even if we find the wallets that, you know, scammed you, the chance to get it back is still pretty slim. That's what sucks. <laughs> when, when Costco chicken. <laughs> ah, Mr. Wright, don't be scared. I'm down 25%. Wow. Of my seven-figure portfolio. That hurts. This is not my first raise. Trust me, the markets are down much higher next. Great. You know what? That's where, that's where we leave it right there. Excellent point, Mr. Wright. Everybody, like today's video, consider subscribing. I'm going to talk about it's time sensitive. But that's it for today. Go out there and touch grass. Enjoy the weekend. Beautiful day here in Puerto Rico. But that's it for this one. Thanks so much, everybody. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a great rest of the day.